So far, we've touched on three different types of investing. We've learned how the evidence points to avoiding active managed funds, and perhaps instead investing in passive funds, or funds that capture returns from specific market risks, or a combination of both. We've also seen the importance of matching your portfolio to your capacity for risk. Ultimately, your success as an investor is entirely up to you. So I think fear and greed are probably the biggest uh, driver of investment decisions. And the thing is, it is the most detrimental impact on creating wealth because what is happening is all your investment decisions are being driven by emotion and not by fact. So what we see is that people uh, want to enter the market when they hear other people have made money. So everyone's drawn to those high returns and that usually indicates the top of a market. It usually means things are getting a little bit expensive. But then when there's doom on the gloom on the ground, uh, possibly an opportunity to buy, people don't want to ever invest. And I think that is the problem. It's when, when there's a lot of money that's been made, there's the greed and everybody wants to go in, indicating a um, high in the market, and again, exiting when the markets are weak. And this develops into what we call the behavior gap. So this is when the market return is actually higher than what the average investor is getting. So a large fund manager in South Africa actually did a study over 10 years where they looked at the return from the fund and then they looked at the return of the average investor. And they determined that over those 10 years, the average investor earned 2.3% less per annum than the fund had actually returned because the investor kept going in and out and in and out of the markets. And that over a 10-year period resulted in over 20% loss for the investor. So again, that idea of market timing can really, really undermine your investment outcome. And I always think when you're driving, you know when you're on the highway and you're stuck in a traffic jam and the lane next to you starts moving and you think, oh, let me quickly move into that lane, it's going faster. And the minute you do that, the lane that you move into stops and the lane you were in starts going. And I think that's a fantastic analogy about how investors mistake uh, market timing and destroy their wealth. Thanks so much, sis. It's because the returns you end up with depend so heavily on your behavior that self-awareness becomes so important. Understanding your own personality, what your goals are, and which biases you're particularly prone to will help you manage this behavior in the years to come. When investors make uh, long-term investment decisions, their tolerance for, for markets rising or falling is a factor that they need to consider. They can't invest all their money in shares if they can't tolerate a 5% drop in, in the value of their portfolio. So it's certainly a factor that, that, that they need to take care of, but at the same time, they need to look at what their overall financial planning requires. All investors over a five or 10 year period will need exposure to shares, but it's the quantum of shares is, that becomes relevant. A constant temptation investors face is to try to time the market, but it's almost impossible to do successfully. Between the two world wars, the bursar of King's College, Cambridge, and the man responsible for the college's investment strategy was the famous economist, John Maynard Keynes. He tried to get into the market when prices were about to rise and out again before they fell. But even he missed the most infamous market crash of all. Keynes ran uh, portfolios both for himself and for his college amongst other investors for about a quarter of a century. And uh, one of the key things that he learned about investing 
was the great difficulty or indeed the futility of market timing. So by market timing, what we mean is trying to pick the points when you should be in or out of the equity market uh, as opposed to being in bonds or cash, for example, because those were the three major asset classes that were available to him in addition to property uh, in the uh, 20s and the 30s. He poured over economic and industrial statistics and indeed he founded the premier economic and statistical service of its day. Despite all those advantages, as well as being a great economist, he found it very difficult to time when to get in and when to get out of the equity market. And probably the prime example of that is that in October 1929, when the London stock market crashed, uh, along with New York, he was very still very heavily into equities. As investors, we're subject to many behavioral biases. And um, one of them is trying to time the market. We want to pick the best time to get in and the best time to get out. At Morningstar, we have done a lot of work around the futility of trying to time the market. We think it's really luck, it's not skill. Warren Buffett coined the term, time in the market is better than timing the market. And the work we did at Morningstar showed that of a period of 5,862 days, when you could have been invested, as an investor, you would have made a return of around 14% per annum. That's a very good return. That's a very healthy, real return. We then looked at what would happen if you had missed just the best 25 days of that 5,800 odd days that you could have been invested. If you'd missed just the best 25 days, your return halved. You got a return of 7%, which is materially different to 14%. In fact, it's just above inflation. Another interesting point we found was that sometimes the best days came directly after or very close to the worst days. So as investors, if we'd sat there out of the market when the worst day happened, it's very unlikely that we would have put our money in and captured the best day. You'll often see in the media, industry experts speculating about the likely impact on markets of major political events, like referendums and general elections. But almost invariably, it's a time such as these that your portfolio should be left exactly as it is. Politicians and the role that they play in markets should be a very small part of your decision making when you make investment decisions. Uh, all investors around the world tend to overemphasize the, the role of a president or a new political party. And unless they're going to be radical in their policies, that should be a tiny factor in your decision making. Focus on your long term goals, your long term decisions, and ignore the political noise. The politicians come and go, the markets remain. So don't get caught up in the headlines and the news because for every market guru out there with an opinion, there's a counter opinion. So rather select an investment strategy that actually meets your investment needs and stick with it rather than trying to second guess those markets. In fact, human beings are hardwired to make poor investment decisions. When markets soar, the reflexive nucleus accumbens fires up at the back of the brain's frontal lobe and we instinctively want to buy. But when the markets tumble, our brain's amygdala floods our bloodstream with corticosterone. Fear kicks in, and we are overwhelmed by the urge to sell. Indeed, it's during a crash or market correction that investors tend to make their biggest mistakes. We often differentiate between the risk that you need to take on versus the risk that you're able to stomach in terms of investments. And we know for long-term investments, we really need to be exposed to equities, to volatile investment conditions. But being able to stomach that can be very tough for some people. So I like to think of myself on being on a boat where there's quite um, unevenness, quite a bit of volatility in the sea around me. And the best way to deal with that is not to look down and look at the very stormy waters below me, but rather to look further out, look towards the investment horizon, get out on deck and actually feel that cool breeze on your face. That helps you to focus on your goal, to focus on where you are going with your investments and almost ignore the noise that is immediately below us. Stock markets have always been prone to periods of extreme volatility and always will be. We can't predict how we'll react until we find ourselves in just that sort of situation. The important thing is to be prepared, understand how markets work, understand your plan, 
and most of all, understand yourself. The greatest threat to your success as an investor is you.